Hello everyone. I'm here to talk about the automatic 10 10 10 machine that I made and showed off on Reddit. A bunch of people asked for a tutorial, so that's what I'm going to attempt to do now. First, I wanted to get through a few things. Let's talk about the mechanics of this thing, how it works, and then we'll actually get on to building it. So a lot of you who have played modded Minecraft with AgriCraft in it have seen some kind of setup like this where you have a long line of cross crops and you want your original crop which is a 1-1-1 to eventually turn into a 10-10-10 and any mod pack that this setup works in will work with this machine if your mod pack has weeds enabled or if you need two parents so two parents and a child this will not work but most mod packs I've seen have the single parent mutation I got tired of doing these long lines and I tried to find something more elegant and I tried to find something with open computers, but AgriCraft doesn't mesh well with open computers. And so I tried it with integrated dynamics and found something that works. Let's talk about the mechanics. This long line can be accomplished the same way with just two blocks. You have two crops and you just alternate back and forth. Once one grows, you break the other and replace it with a cross crop. And back and forth, eventually, you'll get a 10 10 10 seed. I've, I'm helping along the process here with an imaginary time block. It really beefs up how fast these grow. But you could do this with a watering can or something else, and the same is true for the final machine. So. If we get this seed, we can see after a few rotations, back and forth, it has improved. Now it will take a lot to get to 10, 10, 10. So we want to find some way to do that automatically. So I'm using mechanical, mechanical users. And one of the interesting things about these is if you put crop sticks, you set it to redstone pulse, and you put it on use item, when you activate it, it'll place it two blocks away. That's very interesting. But it also works even if there's another block in the way. So if we put this one on activate, see this one is on use and this one is on activate, and we give it some crop sticks. When we activate that one, it still places the stick and then when we do this with activate, it places the cross crop. So I can do that again. One stick, two stick. All right. So then all we need to do is figure out a way to break it. So for consistency, I'm using mechanical miners. So first, we want to break whatever is there. And that's what I've set up here with some redstone. We break, then we wait a tick, then we do the back one, then we wait a tick. And do this one. So all together, it looks like this. And you can see it happening over there. Very quick. And so basically all my machine is is just two of these right next to each other mirrored. And we can see that here. So we've got two miners and two mechanical users. Activate in the front, use in the back. So now that that's out of the way, we'll move on to building this. Okay, we'll work on building exactly what I just described over there. So you want four mechanical users all facing this way. You want activate in the front, and use in the back, and all of these on redstone pulse. Give them some crop sticks.
and then we get some mechanical miners also set on redstone pulse then we'll put two blocks here two blocks here and the same thing on the other side we'll put redstone redstone alloy wire put a repeater there, a repeater there, put some more wire there, and then just repeat the same thing on the other side. And one thing you have to be careful about is when you place these repeaters, they're probably upside down. So to make sure they're facing up, you want this part on the right side when you're looking at it. Right side. So now it's going up the wall. And you can kind of tell that because this alloy wire is hanging off the side there, meaning it's connected. Okay. So now this is actually all connected up. That's ex all that we need there. But we're going to dig down here. The reason we're going to dig down here is when we finally get the 10 10 10 seed we want it to pop off for us to collect so we're going to do with, do that with some pistons so if we put pistons down here we're just going to dig out a little bit you go down one more and a little bit more this way and this is just to make it easily accessible later so you've got your pistons right there going to put redstone there. One block down. Clear this out. Redstone there. I'm going to put some blocks here. Another repeater. Another repeater. And again, these are upside down. We want them to go up. Alloy wire. Alloy wire. Same thing over here. last thing we need to make sure these miners don't get filled up and so what I do is I just throw some conduits on here and void all the items because when these miners break the crop sticks they actually harvest it and because we don't want any of the seeds that aren't 10 10 10 we'll just void them and that's what I've done there so that's all taken care of we can finally get our farmland down. We'll want a water source or whatever you want to use to keep these fertile. And we'll go ahead and do this. That's pretty much it. All we have left is the integrated dynamics part, which I'll get to now. Alright, let's move on to the integrated dynamics part of this. First we'll go over what you'll need. You'll need four redstone writers, two block readers, you'll need some logic cables, maybe a couple display panels, these are optional but they really help sometimes. You'll need a variable store, a logic programmer, either this portable one or the block version, doesn't matter, and you'll need some variable cards. So we'll go ahead and set up the structure of this and then we'll get on to programming the thing. I like to throw my variable store down here right next to that block and then we'll just build some cabling off of it. These need to go, these need to leave space, at least one block of space between these crops and the top of these. Just carry it over and there and then bring this down to there, same thing over there. It doesn't matter that this is blocking the cable because it's all part of the same network. Then we'll put our redstone rider here on this side, here on this side, and then we'll have to dig down to face this down. Same thing over here. So that's our redstone riders. Now we'll put our readers right there and there. So that's it for the structure. And now 
the tedious part. We're going to have to program some integrated dynamic stuff to see what we're looking at and what we want to do with it. So I'll explain that. We'll do this one at a time, but it's exactly the same for both sides. We'll just have to do it twice. So we'll click on the block reader. We'll scroll down to tile entity NBT, and we'll place one in there. And it pops it out like that. I think it's kind of like a furnace on there. That's our most important thing for this side, for this block. If we put a display panel here, and we actually put that in here, we can see exactly what integrated dynamics can look at. So for that crop, we can see that it's a wheat plant. We can see growth, strength, and gain. Those are your three stats that we want to be 10, 10, 10. Right now you can see they're one, one, and one. Don't worry about the B. So we'll need those three. The other thing we'll need is this agrimeta. That's actually the growth stage. So there's eight stages of growth, starting with no growth and going all the way up to fully grown. So you can see it's at 50% now, if we look at the top, and that corresponds to a meta of three. So we'll need to remember these names, agri strength, agri gain, agri meta, and agri growth. So what we'll do is we'll go to our logic programmer, and we're just going to put some strings. We're gonna choose string, and we're gonna type those in one at a time. So we got agri growth, Aggregain, Agri Strength, and Agri Meta. Now, one thing I will say it's very important to stay organized in your, in your inventory. Shift clicking is your enemy here. You need to see exactly where each one of these go because it's a pain to try and work backwards. So we're going to go ahead and take this out and put it here in our inventory. Now that we've gotten those, we're going to want to see what they point to. So actually let's put this back in. So all we have is the name right now and we want this value here for each of these. And we're just going to read those as integers. So what you do is grab this, go to your programmer, and then let's search for integer. And since we're looking at an NBT tag, we'll go to nbt.integer, we'll plug this in, and then for each of these, we'll make one. So there's one for meta, the growth stage. And like I said, we'll stay organized here. So meta is this one. And this is growth. So we'll just do these for each of these. And like I said, shift clicking is definitely your enemy here. Save. Spend a couple seconds here to save minutes later. Alright, so we have an integer for each one of these. So, for instance, if we take this one out, this is strength, we can plug it in here and it'll actually show us, once we put this back in, that the strength is 1. And even though it says not yet analyzed, that data is stored in the plant so we can look at it. Let's take this back out. Let's not confuse ourselves. Let's put these back exactly where they were. All right. So, what we want to do is, when this one has grown, we can break this one. And so we want the data from this one to be sent to this. And the way we'll do that is, we'll make a couple more variables, but this time they're going to be just straight up integers. One is just going to be zero. And let's go ahead and while we're here, let's make one for 30 for later. So, the way we know if this is grown at all is if the meta is greater than zero. So we'll do that exact thing here. We'll type in greater than, 
and we'll check. Okay, this is the meta one, so we want this one. The integer pointing, the integer we get from agrimeta is greater than zero. So we'll make another variable card for that. So now, if we plug this in, you can see it says greater than. If we put that into redstone, that will break this crop as soon as we put the rest of these variables in our store. But let's move on for now. So we have, we have the check to see if this is grown. Now let's get a check to see if it's a 10, 10, 10. And the way we'll do that is we'll just add these three to see if they're 30. And that's what this is for. So we'll get our programmer. We're going to search for add. And it only lets us add two at a time. So we add the first two. That gives us that. And then we'll take that new one and add it to the third one and get another one. So this will tell us what the total is between the three stats. Ideally, we want this to be 30. So then let's do, instead of greater than, we'll do equals. And we'll say, is this equal to 30? And we'll put this one down here. Because if it's 30, we want it to pop the seed up. And that'll do exactly that. So that's actually it for all of this side. The only thing I'll say is if you put these displays up here to keep track of how far the seeds are, it kind of looks cool. And that's what I've done over here. So right now they both say zero because there's no crops, but with a crafting table you can actually duplicate these. I'll show you that real quick. So this one is our final. That's what we want to be 30. So we'll craft this with a blank variable card and that'll give us a duplicate. Now the thing to keep in mind here is this new one that we craft actually goes back here and this one that we grab out of the crafting table is what we'll put in the display. That can be kind of confusing because you think the new one would be the duplicate but it's actually the other way around. So now we can store all of these back in and again shift do not shift click. It will save you so much time later if you mess this up. So we've got meta growth, gain, strength. And then we've got the addition for just the first two and the final addition for all three. And now we'll do the exact same thing on the other side. So I'm kind of going to do this one a little bit quicker. It's the exact same process. See, I accidentally uh, shift clicked that time. It doesn't matter, you can override them like that. So we got the tile entity nbt. We can reuse these strings from earlier. The meta growth gain and strength. We don't have to make new ones. nbt.integer. One for each of these. Then we're going to check if the meta is greater than zero. It's this one. And then we're going to see, oh, we're first going to add these three. So these two first. one plus this one to get all three and then finally to see if that is equal to 30. Alright, and that's it. 
we'll just put these in their corrective spaces. So if you state organized, that should be no problem. Remember, we want this one to point to this. So this one gets this for redstone. And this gets this one. Again, this is the equals that goes for the piston. And this one is the greater than. Then all we have to do is put these back in and you should see this start to activate as soon as I get these all back in. It's waiting on these strings and integers, so I'm just going to... As soon as I put this one in, it should activate. And you can see it kind of got confused because there were two fully grown crops or something like that. So we'll grab a crop stick and a seed and this should start just fine. And this should now be fully complete. So we'll see as soon as this has grown one stage, it will place one for it to grow into. You see that there. So I'm going to come back and we'll talk about adding imaginary time blocks or other tick accelerators. But you can see it's already working and it's just going to switch back and forth. You can AFK here with a bucket or a watering can and this will just switch back and forth until they're 10, 10, 10. So I'll be right back. All right, we're back. This is still going. It's still got wheat seeds, and as you can see, we're nearly to 30. And I added some imaginary time blocks, and that's why it's going so quick. Just a couple. Almost there. And we'll hear a piston soon when this hits 30. Of course, it wants to take its time at the very end. And there we go. So we got a seed, and it fell down there. And that's why we use something like an accumulator. And that picks up the seed, and actually, these can pump right into an analyzer. And we'll see that the seed is now a 10-10-10. So now we've got it beefed up with imaginary time blocks. The only thing then you have to worry about is these running out of crop sticks. So then let's use our new unlimited power to get a wood seed and we'll automate the crop sticks as well. So I'm just going to get a seed in here. As soon as you put one in there it starts. You don't have to do anything else and it'll just do its thing. While it's doing that, we can set up crop stick automation. We'll just get some farmland. We'll get a bucket. I've got lots of imaginary time blocks to run, and let's turn these off. So I'm giving these power, and then we'll pull out the top. So we'll extract this on brown, and insert on brown, and then we'll extract on green insert on green for all of these. Oops. So then all we need is some of this wood essence and then we can get started here. So again, all this stuff is getting voided out. But once we get 10, 10, 10 seeds, we won't really need that anymore, will we? So I'm just going to do a quick recipe like this. And then we'll do 
sticks. And then we'll do sticks. External. And once we put this in, I want to fill up some of these slots. But our seed popped out and it's analyzed. And now we can just put it in here. put another one here, this should start growing. Now let's make sure that these have room. All right, there we go. So now these crop sticks will grow. I added the second display here that shows the thing, and that's really it. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. I uh, hope you enjoyed this.